Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to make over a piece that I previously made over that's just not selling. I wanna make it more modern and make it more accessible to a wider audience. So if you wanna see this makeover of a makeover, just keep watching. Some of you may remember this dresser that I did back in January. I used a one-step paint to make this over and I cleaned up some antique hardware with vinegar and I thought it was really cute but this piece just did not sell. And the funny thing is is that this rustic natural wood dresser that I listed the exact same day got 15 requests and sold right away. So I'm gonna make this over to look more like that one because I have a wood bleach I've been wanting to try out. On that other piece I used a transfer but I'm gonna be using some stick and style stencils from redesign with Prima. They were going to be sponsoring this video and I had so much fun with those so I can't wait to show you those later in the video. But first things first, we have to get all this paint off. I recently learned how to use a heat gun to strip paint and it has been my go-to. I've had several videos that I've done on this process so I will share those with you guys down below. This doesn't always work on every type of paint and I didn't think it was going to work on this all-in-one paint but it started to bubble and chip off nicely so I used the heat gun to remove all the paint. And I decided I'm going to modernize this a little bit so I'm removing all that old hardware and setting it aside for another project. And to go in line with the more modern boho look I'm going for, I'm going to be removing the skirting. Now when you're doing this, make sure that this is not a structural part of your piece. I checked it out before I removed it and it wasn't going to um, affect the integrity of the piece. And lastly, I'm going to remove these decorative keyholes. Now that all of that paint is gone, my sander is going to have a much easier time getting off the rest of that varnish. I'm using my Surf Prep 3x4 Electric Ray and a 120 grit sandpaper to sand down my surface. I get asked this all the time, but I also have a Festool dust extractor and I have an adapter that hooks this sander up to that adapter and it sucks up all the sand, but I still wear a respirator because I wanna keep my lungs healthy. One of my favorite things about the sander is the foam attachments and sanding abrasives that they have that makes it super easy to get around all the curves of your furniture. There was so much sanding on this piece, I finally broke down and bought a Dremel <laughs> rotary tool. I got this at Home Depot. This is the middle of the road one. This is the 3000 and it plugs into the wall, but they have some cordless ones too. But it has this really cool sanding attachment on it that helps you get into little nooks and crannies like these. I've seen so many furniture artists use these. So I finally bought one. Um, I actually bought a lot of power tools at the store the other day for some upcoming projects that I have coming. Um, but I had a lot of fun testing this out and I'm looking forward to using it more in my projects and letting you guys know my thoughts on it. Another reason why I think I had trouble selling this is because of the shape that the drawers were in. Um, I was just trying to sell it as a decorative piece but we're going to get it in working order so I'm going to be replacing these bottoms. I'm just going to take them off with a pry bar. They were nailed in a couple of spots in the back here and I went to the hardware store and got a plywood board that was five millimeters and cut those down to size. We have a table saw so I was able to cut those at our house but if you just take your measurements up to Home Depot or wherever they'll usually be able to cut them down to size for you. You can either attach these to the bottom. Mine had little slots that it could slide in so I just hammered them in and I'm going to be attaching them with some brad nails later. Instead of paint or stain today, I'm just going to be bleaching my wood and try to get a natural look going. I bought this Zinsser wood bleach a while ago off of Amazon because it goes in and out of stock all the time and I've just been waiting for the perfect project to try it out on. And my friend Ashley Lauren, who is here on YouTube, recently did a piece with this and it was so gorgeous that I have been dying to try it out for myself. To start out, I'm putting on the A solution first, applying it with a clean sponge. I have nitrile gloves and goggles on so I don't get any bleach on me. And I changed into some really scrubby clothes <laughs> that I didn't mind getting bleached either.
You just want to saturate the entire piece with this solution and let it set for five minutes if it's softwood and 10 minutes if it's hard. I'm pretty sure oak is hardwood, so I let this set for 10 minutes. You want to put enough on that it's still going to be wet when you go and do solution B. Mine was kind of dry um, when I went to go put solution B on, so I think I probably needed to use more bleach on round A. After the 10 minutes, I came in with a clean sponge and solution B and put it all over the piece. And after you put on solution B, you're supposed to let this set overnight so that it will dry completely. If you want to get it even lighter after you take a look at it the next day, you can do a second round of bleaching. But if you do do that, you have to neutralize it with vinegar before moving on to anything else. I was pretty happy with the results, so I was able to skip bleaching it again and doing the vinegar wash. So I just moved on to the next step, which is using a 220 sandpaper all over the piece to just get rid of the gunk that the bleach kicks up. At this point, I was ready to try out my stencil. Like I said earlier, this is the redesign with Prima stick and style stencil roll. This is the irregular triangles. This is three yards of a continuous stencil, so you can cut it up any way that you want. It's actually sticky on the back and it's reusable. So I positioned the stencil where I wanted it on the drawer and then I cut this down to size so it would be easier to work with. I wanted to use a bright white on this piece, so I just grabbed some Waverly chalk in white, and I have a little stencil brush that I got from the hardware store. You can get these at any type of hobby store as well. And I used a stippling motion to apply my paint, so my paint is a little bit erased and has a little bit of texture to it. I love the adhesive on the back of this stencil. It does not slip, it stays in position, and it actually is really easy to reposition and get it in the exact spot that you want it. But honestly, the most impressive thing to me about this stencil is that there was no leakage, there was no seeping, my lines were crisp and looked absolutely beautiful. And the great thing is I can reuse this piece over and over again. I actually used one piece for all of my drawers. I just kind of wiped off any of the wet paint in between, but you don't have to completely clean it off and it still works every time. There was no seeping, there was no leaking. The first drawer looked just as great as the last one. My original plan was to stencil the rest of the drawer after this was dry, but I really liked the way they looked with this strip of natural wood. So I just kept those as they were. And then I moved on to reinforcing the bottom, the new bottoms that I put in. I just grabbed some brad nails and attached those to the back of the drawer. These look so much better. And I only paid $13 for all the board to refinish all the drawers. All right, now I am ready to seal my piece. So I'm going to start by just cleaning off all the dust before I seal. And I'm going to be using General Finishes High Performance Flat today. This is water-based and I'm going to be applying it with my Zebra fan brush. I love applying water-based top coats with this thing. It just feathers it out flawlessly. This top coat is very similar to other water-based top coats you've seen me use on here. It is not going to yellow. It is milky white and it's going to dry down crystal clear and it's to be nice and flat it's not going to be shiny the wood is just going to look nice and natural and raw I love applying this top coat with this zebra brush. It is a real high quality synthetic brush, so it's gonna alleviate those brush strokes. And this top coat, as it dries down, it will level out even more. So if you do see brush strokes as it's going on, just know as it dries, it levels out super flat and you really won't see any brush strokes at all. After this dried for two hours, I came in and did a light sand with my 320 sanding pad that my puppy has chewed. <laughs> you might have seen that in my bloopers before. So I just give this a light sanding, um, nothing too heavy handed, especially over this part with my stencil. And then I'm gonna wipe back any of my dust and I'm gonna apply my second coat.
After this dried, I put everything back together and then I added some new hardware. I went a little more industrial because I can't go full boho and I picked out this warm chestnut handle from Home Depot. This piece has had quite the journey. Here is what it looked like before and here it is today. I love how this turned out. I think it's really clean and natural. It could go a lot of different ways. I kind of styled it up boho, but with the neutral colors that I used, I think it could go in a lot of different homes and could be styled a bunch of different ways. So this one is going on market. I will keep you guys posted on if I sell it and how quickly I sell it. Typically, I wouldn't be so quick to redo a piece that I had just recently done. It would have sold if I just waited it out, but I knew this was a beautiful all wood piece. I wanted to use some wood bleach. I had a vision for it. And so I redid it because I have a YouTube channel and I need content. But if you have a piece that's not selling, just wait it out. You will find the right buyer for it. But if you feel like making it over again too and trying new products and new techniques, Techniques, you know, I'm game for that as well. I'll be back next week with another project. Thanks for being here, you guys, and I will see you next time.